we're just going to cut off the wings, both sides. And this is something that you want to do at home. Maybe it's like a Saturday or Sunday task, and this is probably one of the best ways to do a whole chicken because what you get is the dark meat and the light meat together as one, and it's number one, delicious. Right in here is the wishbone, so you're going to locate that with your finger and then get it with your knife and just poke right in there and just loosen it and pop it out. Let it dry or you can win. I win. So you want to start on the side of the backbone and just kind of give the skin a little bit of a cut. Now you can start to see that oyster exposed right here. You don't want to miss out on that. Follow the backbone. Then you're going to come up with another bone right here. You want to isolate that bone, just pull it to the side, and then you can start to see the rib cage here. And then just follow the knife back down on the backbone here and just peel, you're basically essentially just peeling the meat away from the carcass here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to get into the thigh bone and you're going to separate that from the backbone. So you can pull it out with your fingers and start to see the joint here. And you cut it right down the back. When you get into the breast, you're going to find the supreme, they call it, or the tenderloin, the chicken tender, and that sits right against this breastplate. So what you do, first of all, is you get a really sharp knife. But you follow down into the breast, get that thigh isolated off, and then just follow right down. This one is almost off the bone. You can see how fast and easy that was. So now we'll do the same with this side. Find that rib, pull out that oyster. Just like that, you can hear that little pop, no problem at all. And now we're gonna work down into the, the rib there, into the breast. What you have here now is a, almost a free bird. So what you wanna do at this point is lift up, isolate that a little bit while taking your time. And you can see it as the knife slides in it, you can see that cartilage part. So now just take it easy, real gentle, and just pull it back just like that. And now what you have is just the carcass, the bones. This is a really easy part as well. So what you do is you can see your little leg bone here. So you just find that bone with your fingers and you just peel it back. And then there's another knuckle in there that you can expose. And if you mar some of this meat when you're hacking away in there, if you're not super confident in doing it, it's okay because what you're gonna, what's gonna happen is we're gonna roll it anyhow, so just don't worry about it. Stick your fingers underneath the, the uh, thigh bone there and just poke your knife through. Then you can just go right down in that knuckle and just pop it right through. And what happens is it isolates that bone, comes right out. So now we're gonna do the same thing with the leg bone. Go right down on the bone itself with the knife. Little bits of cartilage in there and tendon and that. No big deal, we're just gonna pull that out. So now I like to pull that bone through that fat layer, skin, and just pop it out. There's some tendons that sit in there and we'll clean those up in a second. But right down the bone, and that guy comes out. Boom, easy. So now we're gonna go to the other side, find the bone, slide right down on it. So there's our final bone. So what I like to do is just take this guy and cut it right down the skin in half. And we'll just fold these guys up right now, set them aside for a minute, and then we're gonna get into this, this stock. So we're gonna go in with this cast iron, and we're gonna prep our vegetables to go into that as well. So with these guys, I just go in half and then thirds. A couple carrots. I'm just going to peel a little bit, just get that skin off, and I'm going to actually leave them whole, but just gently smashed. So I don't want a ton of garlic flavor in there, and that's a good way to just keep it mellow. We have parsley and oregano from the garden in there. I'm going to cover these guys up so they don't blow away. We're going to set these guys aside, wait for our chicken to brown up. Now we're going to start prepping our stuffing for the bird. The collards, we're going to start them first by just pulling off their stems. And if you haven't been eating these collards, please start. These are so good and good for you and delicious. With the collards, you wanna slice them really, really thin because we're matching it with kale. And you want this, the collards to cook down a lot faster than you do the kale. But I'm gonna turn these guys sideways and just give them a little rough cut. So now we're gonna start with our shallots and garlic. And this is gonna go in with our 
with our kale and our collards. You don't need to go super fine on this. I want to keep the garlic kind of whole and we're going to come back with the knife and just chop it all up anyhow. Call that a rough chop. Into the bowl. So obviously we got to peel these stems out here real fast. Then we're going to give them a nice little cut. Save these for the pigs. Wrap these guys up real tight. We'll get a quick chop on them. I'm not going to go as, as thin as I did with the uh, collards here. And away those go. You can see down there and all those little bits and brown pieces down there. That's what you want. And I might actually add the vegetables first and kind of give those a little saute. Those guys are going to go back in. Now we're going to deglaze with our white wine. This is a Chenin Blanc. That was about a half a cup in there. And what we're going to let that do is just kind of reduce down a little bit, flavor those vegetables in there, let the alcohol burn off, and then we're going to hit it with a little bit of water and let it do its thing. I'm going to start with a nice hot pan in here, and we're going to go in with our collards. And when you're doing this for the stuffed chicken, I like to add a little bit of olive oil. That was probably five tablespoons there. But that's just going to ensure that all the vegetables are coated. And at this point, I'm going to introduce a little bit of salt and pepper. We're going to start building these flavors here. Shallots and garlic to the collards. So now what we're going to do, we got our alcohol burned off a little bit here. I'm going to smash these bones down a little bit, and then we're going to add a little bit of water. We're going to go just to cover the bones here. Not even cover, because we're going to start to spin these around a little bit. Now it's time to introduce our kale to the mix here. In we go. Those collards have cooked down really nicely. Smelling gorgeous. And a little bit more salt and pepper on top of the kale. We're also going to add a little bit of olive oil, just to enrich it a little bit. So now the kales and the collard have been cooked down a little bit. We're going to start in with our wine. Not too much, but you can hear that sizzle. We're going to go lid on because we want that steam to kind of cook those collards and kale right down really soft and then we're going to stuff it with inside the chicken. But what we're going to do now with these guys is set them out in the wind here to cool, which is not a problem today. Now we're going to get our cast iron on for the chicken. We're going to get that warm, let our chicken stock keep reducing. And what I did at home is I took some chicken thighs and a little bit of butter, salt and pepper, a little bit of mustard powder, and ground that up in a Cuisinart. You can do it by hand, but this is a great way to kind of emulsify this kale and collard into the chickens. And this is gonna be our lovely stuffing. What we're gonna do with this bad boy is take the, the tenderloin that comes off here and we're actually gonna fill the void with that. A Little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. What I usually do sometimes is just take a knife and just cut that top piece of the breast and just lay that back down in there so everything's nice and even. And then, for the fun part, you get in there with your stuffing and just lay it right out on top of the bird. What I like to do is take the breast side first because what happens is when you put this in the pan, the breast meat cooks a lot faster and is more easy to dry out. So what we're gonna do is just wrap this guy with the thigh and clear up any stuffing that comes out of there. Now take your piece of butcher twine here and just put it down with a little tag end, a little three inch tag end. Move this guy over right underneath there and pull up so you have that tag end. Cross them and stick the small end through twice. What happens is when you do it twice, it doesn't, it doesn't slide. Pull down and then take your long end, lift up your chicken like that and go around and underneath, set it down and then you go right back underneath there and up and then pinch it tight. You don't want to go too tight because a lot of your stuffing will come out of there. So then wrap again and over and do that all the way through. What I do then is you flip it over, get all the stuffing back in there, kind of draw it tight, flip it back over on itself and then take that thing again, that little end and do it twice through and then cinch down and what you have left is a perfectly contained chicken parcel. There it is. 
little stuffed half bird. And with a bigger piece of meat like this, you want to season it a little bit more than you normally would just a chicken breast or thigh or whatever. We're going to hit this hot, super hot pan with olive oil. So in they go. So I'll spin it around some just so it's kind of all basted up nicely. And you want the skin to get nice and crispy here. What we're going to do now is we're going to get into our stock. I'm just going to take the bones out and let, let them strain for a minute. We're going to check on our chicken. This thing is hot, so oh my goodness, look at that. That's the skin that you want right there. If I was a chicken, that's exactly how I'd want my skin to be. Oh wait, no I don't. Just gonna lift this guy up and strain her through. So now we go back in with our stock to reduce some more. We're gonna check on our chicken again, because this fire is kicking. Oh, what we have there is just a thing of beauty. Now we're gonna tidy up and prep our vegetables. These are beautiful Hikuri turnips again this week from Cosmic, paired with their little brother here, the carrot. So now with these beautiful farm vegetables, really to me, the only thing they need is a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper and some heat, or not even heat. You know, you eat them raw, but this is just, this is a great way to finish a dish like this. Just making sure that all your faces of your turnips and carrots are down on that grill surface. We're looking for that color and flavor. So now we can see that we have beautiful char on these carrots and turnips. I'm just gonna pull these guys off so we can set them aside. We're gonna finish up our chicken here. The biggest thing with this dish is, and the coolest thing about this dish, is you can pull it at 155 degrees. Don't tell the health department because they're gonna wanna have you take it to like 190 or 2000 degrees or whatever. You go right in the middle, all the way down into the middle. So we're at 155 right now. So what we're gonna do is pull this aside cover it a little bit, let it rest, and then we're going to plate it. We're going to start with our vegetables here. These gorgeous high curries and carrots. We're going to do a little bit of green on here, which I love. A little parsley, some chopped scallion from Cosmic. And I'm going to hit these guys with just a little bit of olive oil. And then we're just going to put them down on the plate where they fall. Look at this. You can see that dark meat, white meat, all married together so perfectly. The collards, the kale, and there we go, right up on top. And then we are just gonna drape. This is really just to season and moisten this chicken. We'll put a little bit on the vegetables. We're gonna finish that off with a little bit of chopped chive, a little bit of salt, just a taste of olive oil. And there we have it, purely by chance, deboned chicken, high curry turnips, carrots, collards, and kale. Let's taste it now. Oh, oh yeah, let's babe. do it. Oh yeah, babe. Let's but these are two it. people that really get it done. 20 oh. acres of land on the west side of the Tetons. Thank you guys so much. Mm. Thank you. Mm. Pleasure. Well done. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this bird. <laughs> mm. Oh mm. wow. Wait till you try this. Yep.